Okay, we're going to start working on the loincloth, which is this, this central piece here. And um, I can see on these pictures also that it is on the front and the back. We have this thing kind of sticking down. I'm going to call it the loincloth. In my scrap bin, I found some linen. Linen's a really good fabric to use for this because it has that kind of um, ratty edging that you kind of want. It's going to unravel really nicely. And it's a similar color. We'll have to dirty it up a little bit. It's not too bad. We cut two pieces. And I think they're about 14 by 24 out of scraps. And now we're going to take, and along one edge, we're going to cut this kind of a raggedy cut. And then we might even need to um, wire brush it a little bit after we do that ragged cut to try to scrap it up. We'll see. This is one of the things where you just have to play with it and see how it looks. Okay, I'm going to show you how we work on making this ragged edge. So Josh is going to work on chopping it up. First thing he's going to do is he's going to wrinkle his fabric. And that way when he cuts it, it's going to have a real jagged look. He's going to kind of do a V from the one side and then V in from the other side. Yeah. And then open it up and see what you got. Alright, there's a start of a raggy edge. And now you can just do some more wrinkling and chopping or just chop it up here and there however you want it to look. Okay, once you have it about as ragged as you want with the scissors, you're going to take a brush and um, distress it a little bit. So you can see we don't have such a fresh cut edging where the brush really helps to make it look raggedy. Now we just need to um, figure out how to make it look grungy. So this is the loincloth already aged, and I'm going to show you how we did that. Okay, what I'm using for this is I'm actually using wood stain, and I have a really dark wood stain, dark, and then a medium, and I have a really light. Though I don't think the light did anything. I did use it, but I couldn't tell much of a difference. So first we're going to start with a really dark, and since my brush doesn't fit in there, I have too big a brush, I'm just going to use my stir stick and put some on. Whoops, I dripped on my fabric. And then I'm going to go along the bottom edge. And when you get all done, I like to um, wash it really good with some hot soapy water because it has kind of a stickiness to it, and that will help take some of that stickiness away. But there you go. That's how we're going to age that loincloth and make it look nice and used. There's one more thing I want to do to the, our loincloth, and that is I'm going to flip the top over, and I'm going to stitch along here to make a casing. And that way we can secure it to the garment. So in this casing, you can run one of your belt straps. You can just run a scrap of um, black elastic. You could run a piece of yarn and tie it. I'm going to try to use elastic just because I think that would be the most comfortable and easy thing to do. And that way we'll put um, the front and back through that same piece of elastic. And then it's something you can just slip on and off. And then you can gather it a little bit on the elastic too if you want it not plain flat. The next thing we're going to work on is all these um, wrappings he has all over his arms and legs. And we found a scrap of fabric in my bin that's, um, I think it's a sportswear. You could use something thinner like an old sheet. This is slightly thicker though. And we're going to be ripping it into strips. We're, we couldn't decide if we should do one and a half or one inch, so we decided to split the difference and do one and a quarter. So the main thing is when you cut a strip, um, cut in a little bit to get it started. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to start here and rip. Cut in a little bit and then rip it. All right? So I've got this chunk of fabric and we're just going to rip it up into lots of strips, one and a quarter inch. Okay, once we got our strips all cut up, remember this is our starting color. We wanted it to look a little bit more rugged, a little bit worn in. So this is what we ended up with. And what we did is we took gray paint, just basic craft paint, and we got it on the fabric. And the way we did this is, well, we did it in two steps. The first step was to water it down a little bit, and then we actually got it on our hands, and then we wiped our hands on the strips. And that got the big blotches. 
And then the next step was to water it down a lot and just thoroughly soak it in the water the stuff that was watered down a lot. And that gets this area a little bit grayer too. So as you can see, we've um, really grayed it and toned it down a little bit. And it just looks really filthy now. So I think it turned out pretty good, a lot better than it was. Now we noticed on the picture that the straps on the hands are like a solid color gray. And for those, the we just completely soaked it in the first batch. This that we just dipped our hands in and wiped it on, this is just completely soaked in it. So we end up with a lot grayer. This was kind of stiff, but if you just sort of rub it and work at it, you can get some of that stiffness out and it softens up quite a bit. All right, so there are all of our straps. I have a whole pile of them. Um, I didn't even measure them. I just started ripping up a pile of fabric. One of the things I like to do, though, is try to get rid of these loose threads because once you start wrapping it, if you have those, you'll end up with a big tangled mess because they quickly get out of control. So try to keep the the strings out as best you can because you'll, you'll just end up with these wadded lumps. Alright, now we're working on these shoulder armor pieces, and this is a bit of an uh, issue because this is would have been made out of metal, and obviously we don't have metal to form and curve. So, just looking around, trying to find something in my sewing room that has a stiffness but a flexibility to it. And I found some of this, it's like a packing styrofoam, just a thin sheet. So, basically by just laying it on my son's shoulder and playing with it, I think I have about the shape I want for one of the pieces. Now, his is just curves up nicely to have a little bit of a neck piece. I can't do that with this, so I have cut out a separate piece and stuck it on with some tape. So once you um, play with your foam pieces, or you could even use maybe use a tag board, then you're going to have to figure out what you're going to cover with this with to get it to be that silvery color. Um, you could try paint, you could try um, tin foil. What I actually think I'm going to be using is I have I have some black vinyl I needed for something, and I have left over it, but the back of that vinyl is kind of that, um, it's pretty close to that gray color that we're looking for, so I think we're going to use the back of that. So, I'm going to have to um, spray glue it onto here, and I'll also paint probably these sides and the back just a dark silver or black color. I'm going to take these apart so you can see what your templates need to look like. Okay, so this is what your pieces are going to look at like when they're laid flat. So you just want to kind of copy the shape as best you can. You're going to want to have two of these. One's going to be um, the reverse of the other one. Just ignore my tape. And then your little collar piece end up shaped like this. So you're going to want two of those. Alright, we've got our pieces uh, painted, glued, and cut out. The reason why I painted it is because if you look from the side or if it's up a little bit, I just wanted it to not have that bright flash of white. So we've got two pieces mirror image, and then your collar pieces mirror image. So this one goes to here, and you're going to line up your, your straight edge, goes along your back seam, and then your pointy edge is going to go near the front. So if you kind of roll this, get it where you can see it, and curve this, it goes along, goes along there. And then to fasten, I'm just going to use duct tape on the inside to stick that down. And that'll be our armor pieces. All right, on his collar here, he's got this round thing with another round thing in it. So I just scrounged around the house. I found a lid to a jar of sprinkles. I found a bouncy ball that was actually like an orange. 
nice thing was it's already in two pieces, so using a knife I managed to cut it in half and pry it open. So we're just going to stick that in there, and then I'm going to try to paint it. If I'm having trouble getting the paint to stick, I'll rough it up with some sandpaper. And that will be that. Close enough. For the shirt, we just, if you notice, it just looks like a dark gray or a black shirt. So we just picked up a shirt at a garage sale for a buck. It's just a cotton, basically a long sleeved um, t shirt. It had a, it's got something on it, a logo. I have to try to get off. I had my son try it on though, and it's big, it's really baggy. So I had him put it on inside out, and I pinned along the sides and down along the sleeves, you can see. And then we're going to make it a little bit smaller because this is really baggy and we don't want it sticking out on the sides. Um, we want it to be more form-fitting. So that's what I'm going to do that real quick. I'm just going to sew up. Actually, I probably draw this with a white line and then I can sew along there and then I can either serge my raw edge or zigzag it. Okay, we've got the shirt trimmed down so it's a little bit of a tighter fit. And then looking at the picture, we see that he's got some holes in his shirt and actually this sleeve is chopped off. So just took my scissors and raggedly cut. I actually had my son put it on for this so I can make sure the holes kind of lined up with where the picture is. I did that. I still probably should take a brush to the holes and rough them up a little bit. The other thing I did is I've got the straps. Um, I can't really tell in the picture what the straps are made of and I had some webbing and buckles in my stash that I've taken off other things and saved. So I had my son try it on and I positioned them where I want them to go put a couple pins in it. I'm actually going to now um, tack it in place, probably at the shoulders and in the middle here and in the back, just so that the straps stay put while he's running around the neighborhood. I almost covered up my little logo here. What I'll probably do is I'll take a scrap of fabric from one of the holes I cut and put it over my um, logo. Just kind of roughly do that. So that's the next thing is webbing and buckles. And I don't know you can tell, but my webbing was a little small for my buckles, but I'm using it anyway. I'm just making do and kind of cram it in there. I still probably will sew this end down. Although I guess it's a fine. So that's what we're doing with the shirt. Okay, I'm going to show you how I'm at going to attach these shoulder pads so they don't fall off. I'm actually going to use some peel and stick Velcro. And um, I had my son try this on. And I put the pads on and then I pinned them to the straps. One thing about using fabric is you can pin right through it. And then I used um, the peel and stick velcro. Now, there's a problem. My paint is flaking off really bad. I shouldn't have painted it. And when I first tried to stick the velcro on, it basically just stuck to the paint. So I'm using a, a piece of duct tape to get the paint off and then my velcro will stick. And yeah. So uh, never mind about painting it gray because it's not sticking. So. I've not always had good luck with peel and stick Velcro, but we're going to try it and see if it'll work. So I'm going to Velcro it there, and then I'm going to put some Velcro on the back to where I want it to hit back here. Okay, I was afraid that the Velcro wouldn't be sticky enough to hold it to the fabric and the straps, and I was right. The strength of the Velcro is stronger than the stickiness of the backing. So I'm having to sew it on, which is pretty easy on these straps. On the foam, though, I don't want to go through to my front, so I find that you can just, um, front of the needle, you can just take and catch a little bit of the foam and then come up in your Velcro. But now the problem I'm having is, because I've got the sticky Velcro, my needle is getting really gummed up. And a good way to clean that is to take the um, strawberry off of your the old-fashioned uh, tomato pin cushions always had this little strawberry on top, and they were filled with sand. And that is for cleaning and sharpening your needle. So you can just stick it in there, and that'll clean that gunk off. I find, though, at the fabric stores nowadays, a lot of times these little things on top, they're just sticking them on there for decoration. They don't have sand in them anymore. They're filled with fluff. So somebody has forgotten that the sand was for cleaning and sharpening. There, that's better. When I am done sewing, I can actually run it all the way through and get the back end clean too. So 
I'm just um, going to tack these down with a few stitches on each one to keep them from coming off. The first belt we worked on was this top one. I still had some webbing left over, so I just um, put some Velcro on it, and so that's going to hold it on. It's not adjustable, it's just one size is going to fit him this year. And then for this metal, he's got this like metal buckle thing on it. To make that, I took some uh, pop can tin, and it was kind of shiny, so we roughed it up with some sandpaper, some really um, heavy grit sandpaper, and that kind of dinged it up a little bit in the any spots where it had dents kind of showed up so it took that brand new shiny look off of it and then I just took a piece cut it about the width I wanted folded it over the strap how wide the strap was lopped off my corners and then I took a pencil and I put a dot there and a dot there and my pencil actually slipped and it drew a line and when I erased it the pencil smeared and it added some more funk to it which kind of makes it look even older so now what you do with this, is when he puts it on, you put this over the Velcro. Obviously I still have some threads to snip. And hopefully it'll stay put. If it doesn't want to stay put, I just add maybe a piece of duct tape for the night to back here. But I think it'll stay. It seems pretty tight. So, And there you have one of your belts. We're actually going to be using a couple different mediums for some of the other belts, just based on what I can find in my sewing room, in my stash. So I'm probably going to be cutting vinyl for some of the rest of these. I do have a strap from, it's either like a suitcase, like a leather strap I might also use. Okay. We took some artistic liberty with the belts, and I just had it, ended up with a menagerie of black straps and things. Um, this one's webbing with that tinfoil buckle. With the Velcro. This one's um, black vinyl with the tinfoil buckle. This one's just vinyl with a plastic buckle. This is something off of a suitcase, I think. And then there's two vinyl with buckles, but I have these um, actually a foot straps from an exercise machine. So I added those just to give it some visual interest. And I had two of those. So just play around with different straps and buckles. I actually had some buckles in my stash, but I picked up a backpack at a garage sale for a couple bucks, and I was able to get quite a few buckles off of that and some webbing. So sometimes you can get buckles and webbing off of uh, backpacks that you can pick up for, you know, just a couple bucks, which is cheaper than fabric store. The only problem we had with all of these is as they go through the midsection, he found that he couldn't bend it over hardly. I mean, you bend at the waist, but when they're up higher, that section needs to flex. So he was unable really to bend over very well and by the end of the evening he wore this two different nights for two different events he ended up ditching a lot of the belts so I wish in hindsight that I had added some elastic I mean if not just do all black elastic added you know a section of black elastic to each one so that he could move and it would flex so um, they look cool but sometimes what you see in a picture especially for a cartoon character, is not always very practical in real life when you try to wear it. So, there's the belts. Alright, last thing I need to do is figure out what to do for these tall boots, because we don't have any really tall black boots like that. And we're just going to... My son's just going to wear his high tops. And what we've decided to do is make an extension out of vinyl. So basically you just make a vinyl tube and you're going to put it over the top of the shoe. You just want to cut it and just sew it. So basically you just want a big rectangular piece and you just measure how far around you need to be and stitch it together and it's a nice long tube. And then one other thing I did also is I put a little um, Put a little elastic strap on the front so I could attach it to his strap here. And I, it was too long, so then I shortened it. I've just been adding seams to shorten it to make it about right. And this is just going to keep it on there so it doesn't go anywhere. And you know, most shoes don't have something like that. You could run it around the bottom. These shoes don't have any sort of a. Usually have a little dip in here, you know, between the heel and the front part. Um, these are perfectly flat, so I thought this might work better because. This is going to get rubbed pretty raw by the end of the night. 
And so then, of course, all this is going to be covered by straps. You're not really going to see it, but it's going to help transition from the boot to the from the top of the shoe to the leg. You won't have that really skinny part right there. It'll help kind of fill that in.